Fishing isn't always best during the daytime. On some lakes, they produce more bites during the hours of darkness and some species feed better in the dark too. So in this video, we're gonna talk all about night fishing. Fully. <laughs> wow. There's three main times when I go night fishing, particularly for carp. The first one is when I'm fishing somewhere with quite clear water, where the carp are very, very spooky. By spooky, I mean they're scared easily and the cover of darkness just makes them feel more confident in feeding. Also, on some places where there's a lot of predators, like maybe otters or cormorants, most species will hide away during the day and come out to play during the dark and that's when they'll do most of their feeding. And finally, if the lake that you're fishing receives a lot of angling pressure, i.e. the lake's quite busy, night fishing could stack the odds in your favor as well. So what kit do you need to have a successful night fishing session? Well, I think it's probably most important that I mention the head torch. Sitting in the pitch black trying to find your baiting needle or where you've put your bait tub is not gonna be very much fun if you don't have a head torch with you. I have a very cheap head torch, uh, which eats through batteries way too quick, but it's doing the job for me so far. Next up is your bite alarms and your bobbins. I don't think bite alarms are necessarily the most important thing for any angler unless they're going night fishing. As soon as you're putting rods out and falling asleep, you really, really need something that's gonna alert you to a bite. Bite alarms which, with, with, a, with a sensitivity option are also really helpful. If the wind's blowing and it keeps setting off beeps, waking you up all through the night, that's gonna drive you crazy. So look for a bite alarm with a sensitivity dial on the front so you can get it set just right so you wake up for a fish, but not every time the wind blows. Then beneath your bite alarms, you wanna have bobbins. These bobbins are gonna help tension the line and pull the line down if you get a drop back, if the fish comes back towards you, but also put a little bit of tension on the line, pulling it over the roller or the sensor on the alarm, making sure you get an audible bite each time you get a run. The other thing about bite alarms is, if you're a very heavy sleeper, uh, which I'm not, I wake up every time a mouse does a fart outside my bivvy, but if, you, if you're the guy that just falls asleep and just won't wake up for anything, you really need to get yourself a receiver. A receiver is kind of like a wireless, remote controlled sort of thingy that you can hang in your bivvy, turn the volume up or have it on vibrate, put it right next to your pillow, and when the bite alarm is uh, set off, it will vibrate and make a load of noise in your tent, waking you up. That's definitely something to consider uh, if you can afford it. Depending on what the weather's gonna be like whilst you're fishing, having an umbrella or a bivy could come in handy. I remember when my first few night fishing sessions, I, I didn't have either of those things, and if it rained in the middle of the night, I got soaking wet. But an umbrella like this is absolutely perfect and will keep you warm and dry when it's needed. I'm sitting right now on a bed chair, which is a sort of cross between a camp bed and a normal chair that folds out. You can take this fishing with you, get a good night's sleep, and it's definitely worth the investment. Uh, if you're maybe a little older and you've got a sore back like I already do, a proper bed chair is really helpful. An often overlooked element of night fishing is bringing enough food and water on your trip. Fried bread, pancakes, sausages. It's easy to think, well, I'm only gonna be out for a few hours and I'll be asleep for most of them, but it's surprising how a couple of bites during the night and you find yourself feeling either peckish or thirsty, so pack yourself a food bag. Finally, there's one more thing that you should probably bring night fishing with you, and that is a mobile phone, or if you don't have one, go with a friend. There's an element of risk in everything we do, especially around water, so it's just a nice thing to have a nice reassuring thing to have is a mobile phone with some signal so you can call for help if anything should go wrong. Now here's a few things to keep in mind before your next night fishing trip. First of all, is that day spots aren't always the same as night spots. What I mean by that is just because you catch fish from a certain area of the lake in the daytime doesn't mean those fish are gonna still be there when it gets dark. I've definitely noticed on many waters, I'm getting bites maybe out in some deeper water during the day, and then after dark, 
the fish start crashing closer into the margins in sometimes shallower water. I think this is because once it's uh, once there's less light available, the fish feel less threatened, less scared because predators can't see them, and they get more ex ex exploratory or whatever the word is. They they are willing to come into those shallow areas that they would otherwise be too scared to visit. So don't go out thinking you're just going to catch on the spots you normally fish. You might find that there's different areas where those carp hold up during the hours of darkness. The best way to locate these nighttime zones is to set the alarm for midnight or two in the morning or whatever and begrudgingly pull yourself out of your bed and sit there and listen. Because listening for fish jumping, if the water's flat calm and it's quiet, is the quickest and best way to locate where they like to be in the night. Chilling in my bivvy with my candle light. I wonder if I'm gonna get a bite tonight. Some places I've fished, you go to bed, you're like, there's no fish anywhere in the area. And suddenly in the middle of the night, you're woken to a big splash and you go, well, where was it? You need to sit there by the water and wait for another crash because one or two fish crashing in an area could give away a secret spot that you would otherwise have ignored. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that it's quite easy to bait up too heavily when you're night fishing. You get in your stall set up, your rods are out and you think, oh, I'm doing a night session. I'm gonna put loads of bait in. But a night session might only be 12 hours, same as a day session might be 12 hours. So filling it in with too much bait at the start could be ruining your chances. I find the best thing to do is start small and build up. So once you've had a bite, top up with some more bait over the top. You might be able to get something going and draw more fish into the area, but simply filling it in with bait before you go to bed is a recipe for waking up the following morning with absolutely nothing. Now you might be wondering, how do I bait up in the dark? How do I recast a rod and actually get it back to the same place that I cast it whilst it was still daytime? And this is where distance sticks and the line clip on your reel come into play. I've actually got a dedicated video on this YouTube channel about how to bait accurately with a spod or spawn. So that's definitely worth looking at uh, if you're new to this style of fishing uh, and you wanna be able to accurately bait up day or night. I'll put a link in the description of this video. But in essence, you are lining up with something on the far side of the lake, maybe a tree or a building that you can see silhouetted at night. And then you have the direction you're casting in fixed. You stand in the same place place you know it's going in the right direction and then to make sure it goes the right distance all you need to do is put two bank sticks in the ground these are called distance sticks wrap your line around them and count how many times you have to wrap it around until you get to your line clip then you can cast in hit the clip put the rod down the wrist obviously take the line out the clip and you're fishing accurately the same distance out the same angle and you can do that with your spot as well uh, I find distance sticks absolutely invaluable on any night fishing session. It's really worth being prepared before it gets dark for a bite. What I like to do is just run through it in my head before I go to bed. So I'll lay down and I will think, okay, my head torch is there, in the place it always is, ready to grab, stick on my head. My shoes are in the, in the front of the bivvy, ready to slip on wellies or crocs or sandals are a lot easier to put on quickly i'd advise those then i've got a clear route down to the rods there's no uh, line or bank sticks in the way that i might trip over on the way to strike the rod next to my rods is my landing net you do not want to wake up play a fish for five minutes and then realize your landing net is somewhere down the bank then your unhooking mat your scales your waistling whatever you're going to need when you get a run have it all ready as you don't really want to be doing it in the moment I also like to have rigs and baits sorted in the evening too. I will just tie maybe two or three spare rigs just in case I catch or I have to change them if the hook goes blunt or something. And stuff like making PVA bags is also well worth doing before you go to bed. It will just speed up the whole process and make it easier for you to get your rods back out on the spot and uh, get back into bed where it's nice and warm <laughs> as quick as possible.
fish on. Another thing I just thought of is that it's good to be respectful of other people on the lake, particularly when you're fishing uh, in the night. What I mean is, don't go making too much noise or making a load of light disturbance if maybe people live nearby or if there's other people fishing on the lake. It's just respectful to keep yourself to yourself and uh, be relatively quiet. If you're scared of the dark like I used to be when I was a kid, uh, having someone with you will definitely help with that. And also it's just lovely to share the moment when you finally catch something with a friend. That looks incredible, by the way. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It looks ridiculous. <laughs> if you want to check out that video I mentioned earlier about how to bait up accurately with a spot, it's on screen now. And if you're not bothered about watching that, thanks for sticking around and good luck with your night fishing. See you guys soon, back on the Fishing Tutorials channel. Ciao.